Hi everybody, it's Heather from Little Bird Blythe. Earlier this week I uploaded a video to um, show you something that I made over the weekend and it's this lovely little sofa um, which is covered in cashmere and it's perfect size for my Blythe dolls to sit on and I also made this little pull along um, trolley uh, for my Blythe's using some of the leftover materials from this. Now I promised I would show you how I did it. I'm not going to show the entire um, making of it as in I'm not going to make one in front of you but I'll describe each of the stages and hopefully that will be enough for you to be able to make one yourself should you want to so I'll just go through the materials that I've used um, like I say I covered it in cashmere so you'll need some suitable fabric for the cushions to cover the cushions you'll also need a wadding um, so either sort of cushion filling or toy stuffing um, for the cushions themselves I'm actually using quilt um, filling um, which is sort of rolled in a sheet so it's really easy to use and you can actually cut it to the right size and it's it's really lovely and easy to use so that's what I've got inside mine um, like I say fabric to cover it with I'm using cashmere I upcycle cashmere jumpers on a regular basis so I've got loads of them hanging around but you could use any fabric that you like I have used um, less than an arms or length so less than a sleeve worth of jumper um, so if you upcycle jumpers you know you can literally cut a sleeve off and pretty much use that so that's what I use but it's so soft I love cashmere I use it in a lot of my stuff so I would recommend it but it can be quite pricey um, so velvet would look nice as well if I had the right shade of velvet I probably would have used that I've decorated a little cushion um, with a little heart as well so you probably want something to embellish it with so the frame itself is made using a very stiff um, what I would call mount board so it's about 1.5 mil thick it's really rigid so as long as you've got some very stiff card you probably could use balsa wood as well but I haven't used that myself um, it's not something I've got available I got rid of all mine because I just wasn't using it but you probably could use that um, but this is really stiff and good to use so it's, you can cut it out with a pair of scissors but it's still nice and rigid so you want an A4 sheet of that and you also need an A4 sheet or you probably need two because you want to cut your template out of something and I've just got a sheet of craft card recycled craft card that I'm using for the base of my cushions because you'll need not only are you going to make the frame itself you're also going to make the same shape just very slightly smaller in order to be able to cover that for the cushions because you'll then stick those on um, so you've got the, the base the frame you'll then have the same shape and that you'll cover with the wadding and your fabric you then you make that into a cushion then you stick that on to the frame itself so you've got to do this in stages because there's a bit of gluing a bit of painting involved as well oh and I got some um, I used acrylic gesso to paint um, the board so that it was white um, so some acrylic paint or gesso something like that will be useful the other material um, that I used was these um, little tiny cotton reels um, I've got another one in there somewhere. I was going to use little tiny cabinet handles for the feet, but I couldn't find any the right size. I could get some online, but I didn't want to wait for them to come before I made it. So I'm using cotton reels, but you could probably make some out of dowling if you wanted to cut some dowling down. Um, so that's that. You're also going to need different types of glue. Um, I use a silicon glue for some of it. Um, which is just my preference. I also use some double sided sellotape and a really great glue is called Trivet which is good for beads and sequins. It really holds them in place and that's great for um, making sure that all your edges are glued down well. I'd also say get some pegs like clothes pegs because you can you can sort of hold the edges down then um, while the glue is setting so you don't you can go and do something else um, and that way you'll get a really nice tight seal around there so yes yeah, some um, pegs are great and also you'll need some um, paper tape now ideally I would have had some framers tape because that I think that would have worked better but um, I got this um, painters tape instead but this this isn't very high tack obviously because of the type of thing that you use it for but it was enough to be able to just stick 
um, the edges in place. So I'll show you what I'm using that for in a moment. So they're the different ingredients that you're going to need. I hope that makes sense. Um, save your card cutoffs because you'll be using that for the little trolley. Uh, and the other thing that you need for the trolley is a skewer or a dowel, a very thin dowel, because you're going to be using that for your wheels. Hopefully I'll get that done as well today because I'll show you how to do that too. Right then, so it's quite simple to make but it is a little bit time consuming because there's a lot of gluing that goes on. You make your template and um, you are then going to cut that out on, so you're going to use it to draw around for your frame on the board. You're also going to use it for your card because you're going to use that as your cushions. So you can cut it out very slightly smaller when you use it on the card for your cushions because obviously the cushions are quite poofy and uh, they may sit proud if you do it too big. But so you, if it's just a fraction smaller when you cut out the card, then that was fine. You can adjust it as you go. So first things first, make your template. I went for measurements, which I may have said already, um, approximately three and three quarter inches depth, um, six and a half inches wide, um, and obviously your your back piece and your side are going to match up with that. It's totally up to you the style that you use. I just went for sort of a, a curved shape, nice and simple curved shape. Those bits will fit together like that. But I went for just a simple slope down. Um, but obviously you could do, you could just do a, a raised back and you could do two side pieces if you wanted to. So that's totally up to you how you do that. You make it as ornate as you like. I went for simplicity. So with your template, you're going to draw those out on your board and your card. And then as I have here, I've put them out of the board. You can see that this is pretty rigid stuff and it's strong enough for holding a, um, a doll. Now, what you're gonna do next is assemble your pieces. So you're going to glue the back and the, oh, helps if you get it the right way around, the back and the side on to your base piece. Now, how I did this was using some wet glue very nice strong wet glue and I just put some of that on the edge I use the trim it glue but because um, it's really strong but it's basically a really good quality PVA, I think. Put some on there. Some. On here. And this is where the uh, decorator's tape or the um, framer's tape will come in handy. You want this edge to be nice and flat. So it fits easily. There we go. There may be a bit of adjusting to do. That's probably going to fall over. Um, we'll adjust that in a minute. But basically if you then take some decorator's tape or framer's tape, which I think is slightly better, you can literally stick. So make sure that your edges line up Ugh. this stuff is terrible back to peeling oh well that's marvellous that work yeah. so the glue will hold it but the tape 
gives it a bit of extra stability and just make sure it's not going to fall over. And the good thing is that the if it's paper tape you can then paint over it. So I think you get the idea there. You're gonna I would use enough decorators tape or papers tape all the way along um, and all the way on the side to hold it in place and in fact if you look at my original oh you don't think you can tell on the camera but you can see it is quite rough you can actually see where the tape is sat and where I've painted it I mean that's going to be against a wall but I wanted the shabby sort of look anyway but you can see where I've sort of stuck it all the way along so put plenty on don't scrimp um, and then that will hold up and that'll be really nice and rigid okay so I'm going to take, I'll put that to one side I'm not going to actually finish that on camera okay so the next stage while that's drying you are going to cover she says your cushions and now I'm using this wadding so what you're going to do is take and I can find what I've done with them put them under there is take your cutout for your cushions and you are going to just roughly cut some wadding the shape of your cushion uh, the shape of your template the shape of your um yeah the back of your cushion so you're going to cut around there but sort of inside because so, you don't want it to be over the top of the cushion if you see what I mean so I'm going to cut those out um, I cut I actually did two pieces for the for the base so when I did the when I did the back I just cut one piece that pretty much fit on top of there and the side just one piece but because it's quite thin because I'm using um, wadding for a quilt for the base you can see it's quite plump I actually cut one rectangle and then a smaller rectangle which sat in the middle so it made it more plump so that's what okay so I've cut out a piece of wadding which is the same shape and sort of same size as my the back part of my cushion and I've also got a piece of my fabric which is bigger than the cushion back because that's going to fold all the way over now you can see what I've done here is put some um, double-sided tape onto the um, piece of card so if I take that off I'm then going to use that to stick the wadding down so that just stops it from moving around while I'm putting the cashmere over the top right so there's my cashmere so I'll pop that on top of the wadding and if I turn it over you can see on the other side I have put some double sided tape but just on the edges because what we're going to do is um, peel that off and then pull the cashmere tight over and use the double sided tape that's on there just to stick that in place this does not have to be perfect believe me mine isn't so here we go and you might find that if you've used relatively thin card it might just pull um, just warp it slightly but it doesn't matter when you stick it down it will be fine it will stick flat so there we go we we'll pull that over there now there's some corners as well, all that wadding's gone and stuck there. So I'll show you how to deal with those in a minute. Okay, now with the corners, what I chose to do, um, and you don't have to, you can literally just... Um, cut them off and then just glue the edges down if you want but I wanted to make a slightly neater job um, and it sort of pulled the cushion uh, back into its original place as well 
um, I actually took a needle and thread and I just sewed the, the corners down and I actually zigzagged the stitching, large stitches, so pulled some there, pulled some there, sort of laced it up till I got to this corner and then sewed that corner down as well and that just had the effect of holding all the corners in place. Now you don't have to do that, that's just me and my slight OCD about crafting. Um, you can see that if it, it's covered anyway and what you're going to do is stick that onto the back anyway so you're not going to see any of that messy stuff there. So if you've got some glue, um, some fast drying glue, you can literally just stick that down if you want to but like I say I did a bit of stitching as well. So they, basically that's how you do your cushions, you're going to do that for the back, the side and the base and just remember to make the shape slightly smaller than your frame because when you pop it in place it might sit slightly proud of your frame and you don't want that really, you want it to sit snugly. Um, you might find that you have to adjust it so it has to be slightly smaller because you've got all the poofiness and sort of moving things around. So that's how you cover your cushions. So when your frame is dry uh, and it's definitely stuck then you can paint it with your gesso or whatever or leave it as it is or cover it perhaps with scrapbook paper the same shape um, and then you'll have a lovely sturdy frame and which to stick your cushions on. Now to stick the cushions down, I'm not going to show you this part because my frame isn't um, in a fit state to physically put it on yet, but I used, this is where I use the silicon sealant, um, the silicon glue, uh, because it, it dries, it dries slightly bulkier, slightly proud, so that's quite good for sort of sticking that on. Um, but it dries really really strong so it's great for sticking card onto card um, with a bit of flexibility so I used that and then round the edges uh, when that was dry round the edges I used my trim it glue just to go round the edge with the glue I then stuck it down and I'll show you uh, with a, a peg I actually used normal clothes pegs as well but I actually held it in place with some bulldog clips all the way around the edge and that held it in place enough to be able to dry. I hope that's clear, I hope that makes sense. Um, when the cushions are on and they're finished uh, and it's definitely dry and you're happy that all the edges are nice and tight and that there's no gaps, it's, the cushions aren't coming off, then you can stick your um, feet on. So whatever ch feet you've chosen like I said I went for these tiny cotton reels and used those you'd basically pop a bit of the strong white glue or super glue or whatever you want to use and then literally stick those in place and voila that's your sofa done and you can make numerous little cushions and pillows and whatnot for it as well I hope that's clear if it isn't please ask questions you're more than welcome to um, so that's that now using the leftovers I made this little um, pull along toy. So the base itself is literally just a rectangle of the hard board that I used for the base and the, uh, the frame of the sofa. So you just cut a little rectangle and then using a skewer you want to then cut that so that it sits proud of the rectangle that you've chosen. Now you can use scissors I think to probably to cut this stuff but I tend to use my clippers so you would cut two, they do tend to fly, two pieces the same size, it's going to go flying, Whee! watch your eyes, uh, two pieces the same size, there you go. Now to make the wheels I used the card, the thin flimsy card, so the, cut, the leftovers and I basically just cut strips, I won't do it with that because, and I, I actually use my paper shredder which is um, a, a, just a strip paper shredder, it's just a cheapo one I got from a charity shop and I basically cut myself some strips of cards, so mine are all very uniform in size but you can do it like I showed, you can just do it with a pair of scissors and then what you're going to do is using a little bit of white glue on one edge Here, 
is pop your card there and wrap it around. Now anyone who does quilling will be very used to this process. I used to do that. I love quilling, don't do it very often. But it's actually a really absorbing hobby. Oh, that's not sticking very well, I'll do that in a second. And then you basically just pop a little bit of glue. Ooh, notifications. A little bit of glue all the way along the edge and then you're just going to roll it up tight. You know when you're doing stuff on camera you make a right bodge of it sometimes. Well I do anyway. People I watch don't seem to. I'm not going to re-record this just for this. So just wrap it tightly. There we go, that's better. And coil it up. Till we get to the end. And that makes a super little Blythe toy sized wheel. I have to hold that for a moment for it to set. But that's a lovely little wheel. There you go. Now, uh, obviously, you're going to do that on each of the ends, and then you are you need it to be able to move. Unless you don't want it to move, if you're just doing it for display, but you want it to be able to move. So how I stuck it down was again to use little strips. I literally stuck it down each side of the skewer, if that makes sense. But obviously not. I didn't stick the skewer itself. So um, so it's slightly proud, so the skewer can move freely, if that makes sense. So there you go, so that's what I did. Then all I did then was punch a hole, add a bit of string, and I got a moving trolley. I hope that makes sense. I keep saying this, but I do hope it makes sense and that it's useful to you and that it gives you some um, enthusiasm or motivation or inspiration to go and make some of your own Blythe size furniture or toys. Um, obviously these aren't suitable for children to be playing with because they are still at the end of the day fairly fragile. I've only made them out of card um, and small items like that are choking hazards so be very careful to make sure that children don't get a hold of those. They could be a, a hazard or a danger to them but uh, you know as adults and there are a lot of adults I know um, that collect dolls and like to make things for their dolls, um, like myself. So um, hopefully it will give you some inspiration to do it as well. Right, I'm in danger of going off on a tangent and talking complete nonsense for the next few minutes. So I'm going to stop there. I hope you enjoyed it. I did. And it was really lovely to do something a bit different. At least I've got something off my list that I really wanted to make. Um, thanks for all your encouragement, everybody. If you've got any questions or comments, please do leave them below. If you're new to my channel, you haven't subscribed yet, then please do consider doing so and um, clicking the notification bell if you want to know when I upload future videos because I'll be doing more dolly dress ups, more dolly videos and hopefully more DIYs at some point in the future. Um, and if you don't mind, please do give me a thumbs up because it's always nice to receive some encouragement encouragement myself. Um, I love all the videos that the, um, the dolly people I watch put out. You know, there's some really great uh, people out there and I, I just love it um, and I you know I, I do appreciate when anyone watches my videos it's just really nice I feel like I'm part of a community and that's really nice for me so I hope you've enjoyed this I'll stop blathering enjoy your week and um, do comment below if you've enjoyed this and give me that thumbs up thanks ever so much for joining me I look forward to seeing you in the next video take care everyone